This week's video is a bit of a request. We've had some people asking for more Lightroom related content, especially with regard to black and white. And to be honest, I'm quite happy to do a few of these. Digital black and white is my area of expertise, I guess. I've been working with it for well over 25 years now, and I've edited and printed black and white work for exhibition, for publication, and also for advertising. And I've also edited and printed Sir Don McCullen's digital black and white work in the past as well. Now, I've been using Lightroom Lightroom is my main editing tool for well over 15 years. I still find it to be the best overall solution for black and white photography. Now, before we get started on the edit, I just want to say a couple of things regarding whether or not having a monochrome camera will get you better black and white photographs. Now, obviously the advantage of a monochrome is that it forces you into thinking in black and white, you know, and that's a really powerful thing. But when it comes to the actual editing, when it comes to making a finished black and white image, there isn't that much advantage to having the monochrome. I could show you a bunch of black and white images which have been taken from color cameras and monochrome cameras, and I doubt anybody watching this video would be able to tell me which was which. When it comes to the editing, once you convert a color file to black and white using a profile, there is very little difference in terms of the rest of the editing process. I handle a converted color file and a monochrome file in exactly the same way. The photograph which I'm going to take you through today is a street image. I don't think it's one that I've shown before on this channel, but it had the kind of distinction, if you like, of being recognized as a Leica master shot by Leica Photography International magazine. Now, before we actually get started on the edit, there are a couple of things which just help me when I'm editing. First of all, my mouse, which is a Logitech MX Master. I have this set up so that the buttons on the mouse can do the most common editing tasks without me ever having to touch the keyboard. I also have an Elgato Stream Deck with some of the lesser used functions set up on it. Lightroom isn't that great when it comes to keyboard shortcuts. In fact, I'm actually being quite polite. It's absolutely awful when it comes to keyboard shortcuts. You know, they're not logical. So I find it a lot easier just to be able to press a button on a mouse or a Stream Deck in order to get me to where I want to be within the software. Now at my level, which is a professional level, I work in a consistently lit environment. The light level here is always exactly the same. And my monitor is a 4K monitor that has been properly calibrated. Now some people will find that's probably a little bit overkill. And to be honest, I would agree if you're editing on a standard laptop screen or an iPad and you only do things like Instagram and YouTube, that would be absolutely fine. But when it comes to things like editing for publication or editing for fine prints, you have to start with a properly light managed, color managed environment where everything is calibrated and consistent. What I wanted to do is just show you very quickly how to get your color file correct for a black and white conversion and the correct way of converting it to black and white. What we're going to do first of all, we're going to open up the basic panel and I do this with a button on my mouse. I have a button that opens up the basic panel and I also have a button that opens up the tone curve panel. And these are the main two panels which I use in Lightroom when I'm actually working on an image. So I'm just going to go back into the basic panel. And what we have here are profiles. This is what I'm talking about when we look at profiles. And as you can see, the standard profile for this image, because it's a color image, is Adobe Color. Now to convert it to black and white, all we're going to do is change that to a black and white profile. But before we do that, we just want to make sure that our image is kind of in the ballpark with regard to exposure and white balance. I know the white balance is going to be OK because I set all my cameras to daylight, all my color cameras to a daylight white balance. So I know we're going to be in the ballpark um, when we bring it into Lightroom. But this is looking OK. I'm just going to zoom in and just check. We haven't got any noise issues, which we haven't. If there was a lot of color noise in here, I would probably take it out because it looks really ugly when you convert to black and white. Now to convert to black and white, all I'm going to do is go to my profile section here. And these are from my Silver Chrome profile pack, which I'll link to in the description below but right at the top is the one that comes with Lightroom which is what we're going to use for this picture and I'm just going to click on Adobe Monochrome and as you can see it does a basic quite flat looking conversion to black and white and if you look at it next to the straight out of camera uh, like a monochrome shot OK, it's you know, it's not a million miles away. And looking at those two together, you'd be hard pushed at this stage to know that one comes from a, a purely black and white camera and one is a color conversion. 
But this is the photograph we're going to be looking at today. One of the things that I like to do is actually look at the photograph and decide what I'm going to do with it. When I first started editing in Lightroom, one of the things I used to do was just rush straight in and start messing about trying to get a picture to look right. And you end up chasing your tail a little bit. So I'm looking at this photograph and thinking, well, it needs some more contrast. Obviously, it's a little bit flat. This guy here needs bringing out much more in the frame. Um, this guy here is quite dominant, but I'd also like to bring out a lot more of this area here in the big sort of mural that's in the back, or the big poster that's in the background here. Now, the first thing to do is to change this profile from the monochrome profile, which is immediately attached to any Leica monochrome images. And I'm going to change that for one of my uh, profiles in my silver chrome pack, just to give me a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to go down to P32 and immediately that looks a million times better. You can go for a little more contrast. You can go for something like American Idol and that really brings everything down. But in this particular instance, I'm going to stick with P32. So the next thing I'm going to do is just get my white point and my black point set. So I'm just going to hold the option key down. And this really is the only time I tend to touch the keyboard these days. I'm going to hold the option key down and then I'm just going to move the black slider to the left until I start to see the areas in the picture that I want to be pure black. And I just keep taking my finger off the key just to see which parts in the frame are reaching that black point. And you can do the same with the whites. Okay, um, we have some specular highlights here in his zip and on the, the wheels. I could probably hold the highlight slider and take them out, take them right down so that you know, there is information in every part of the frame now, including the extreme highlights. One thing I will do is just crop it a little bit. I think there's just a little bit too much information on the right hand side of the frame. So I'm just going to come in a little bit more and crop it. Okay, and try and keep this guy's head on the third here on this line going through, which is quite nice. I think that's absolutely fine. Not a lot taken off the file, but you know enough to make it a little bit more pleasing on the eye, I guess. Okay, so we're going to start first of all with um, this guy here. And what I'd like to do is have a little bit more contrast in his face, a little bit more texture in his face. And I'd like to take him down a little bit, particularly this area here with his jacket. Now you can do that with people or object masks, but I much prefer to use a brush. So I'm just going to have a big brush. Okay, and I'm going to paint the brush on and you'll see it go red. And this is where I'm brushing now. Of course, I with my finger wheel, I can just adjust the size of the brush on the fly. And then what I'm going to do then is use the curve that's come up here. This is for the brush and I'm just going to bring that area down. Okay, just to make it a little bit darker. And I'm not really worried if the brush hasn't really hit all the areas or if it's spilt over into other areas around the figure. I'm not really concerned about that at all. That's part of the um, dodging and burning feel that you get with the photograph. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on his face. So I'm going to create another brush. I'm going to just drop down the feather a little bit for this. And then I'm just going to paint over his face. And again, I'm not worried about this spilling into other areas. In the dark room, you would get spilled. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Again, I'm going to work with a tone curve. And I'm just going to bring that area down. Can you see immediately his beard has come darker? Okay. And we've got a little bit more contrast now. And I can just push the highlights a little bit. And that's quite a difference. If you take it on and off, if we think that's a little bit too much, we can back it off a little bit. So there's our before, if you like, and then we can just bring in, we can make it extreme or we can make it sort of in the middle. So I'm going to back it off just a little to about there, I think. Now, what I want to do is bring this area down in the background. So I'm going to create another brush. I'm just going to increase my brush feather again. I'm just going to make the brush a little bit oversized and I'm just going to paint into here. Okay, now we can go back to our tone curve again and we can just bring that area down. A lot of control with the tone curve, a lot of control. It also is kind of like a one-stop shop for tonal adjustments. I find the tone curve is by far the most intuitive way for me to actually create light and dark areas. Okay, that's cool. And again, if we can turn this off and turn it on, make another brush. And I'm just going to paint around the bottom of the frame here. I'm going to go and pull my mid-tone shadow area down a little bit. 
okay which is kind of cool and I'm just gonna extend that just around the edges of the frame here maybe up into the top of the frame here as well and probably up into his jeans a little bit more so we don't have this cut off okay so I'm gonna zoom in now I'm gonna zoom into 100% I'm just gonna go across to this guy take another brush I'm just gonna paint in over his face here and then I'm going to go to the effects in the mask and I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity which is nice and a little bit of dehaze there we go okay cool this lady here she's looking a little bit flat if you kind of zoom into her and we'll just go across to see what she's doing you can see her skin tone is a little bit flat it's kind of got that digital kind of skin tone feel so again I'm just going to click on that just paint around that Okay, go back to our clarity and actually clean that up. And maybe just lift the face a little bit. There we go. Cool. Let's zoom out and see what that looks like. I'm kind of thinking that his face here might be a little bit too much. Um, so I'm going to go straight back to that mask. Okay, and I'm just going to back it off a little bit to there. Okay, and I'm quite happy with that now. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do is go to my presets panel, add some uh, fast grain. Some, I might do some push grain actually. I'm just going to back it down. And finally I'm just going to do an overall clarity adjustment to make it look like a film scan. Okay. And that should be our image done. And you can see it's quite a dramatic change at the same time when I was doing it it didn't seem to be quite a big change if that makes sense thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did we'd love to see you subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one more Lightroom editing tips that kind of stuff just let me know in the comments and until next time take care and I'll see you soon